Hey, you're here with Ben and welcome to Germany's best medieval festival. You've seen the thumbnail, I've shown you some clips, you know what's going on. We're going to one of Germany's best medieval festivals, the Peter and Paul Fest. Held over one long four-day weekend in July, the small quaint town of Breton is overrun by knights, lords and peasants as it's thrown back in time 500 years. Sounds like an amazing time to me, but there's only one way to find out. Now before we actually get to Breton and the epic festival, it wouldn't be a very good near from home video if I didn't explain the logistics. To keep things simple, I decided to forego a hotel in Breton and instead stay in Karlsruhe. I only had to take one train from Munich to get here and they have a ton more connections to places like Paris and Frankfurt. So honestly, anybody can get here by train. So I don't want to see any of you guys taking your car here. You don't need it. Once you've got your base and you're settled, well, getting from Karlsruhe to the festival couldn't be easier as it's just a 30 minute local train. And I think mine leaves in about five minutes. I have probably said this a million times at this point on this channel, but I love the European rail network. Two trains from Munich to Brayton, it's incredible. Oh yeah, you excited? In about 10 more meters, you're gonna feel silly for not having a cool hat. This looks really cool. Seems the only way to enter the town, at least this weekend, is with a ticket. A two ticket are online gebucht? Yeah, I have QR code. Ah, that's da. Yeah. Vielen Dank. And when you walk through their admittedly fake tour, you are greeted with a truly exceptional view. Oh man, right by the entrance is this fantastic sign. Yes to making YouTube videos, no to bringing your own swords. Words to live by, really. Honestly, I don't know what I was expecting, but it is so incredibly busy here. Sadly, because of the corona situation, they haven't done this in a few years, so who knows what the stats are gonna be for this year. But the last time they did it, they had 140,000 visitors, which is incredible. This year though, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they beat that record. And everyone has just such wonderful outfits. Everyone's just really getting involved. It adds for such an amazing atmosphere. And I thought I was gonna feel really silly in my hat, and I definitely do, but not for the reasons I thought. It's not because no one else is participating, it's because everyone else is so much more historically accurate than I am. This is just a carpet with a feather in it. I mean, surely just a shirt and a belt would really pull this whole fit together, right? Maybe even a fake fox fur? Clearly, I need an outfit to match. Maybe not this year, though. The history and theming of this festival is also a little bit dense and complicated, at least for an outsider to pass through. But I'll tell you what I've managed to figure out so far, starting with why it's called the Peter and Paul Festival and not just Ren Fair, like you might see in America. The Catholic Holy Day of the Feasts of St. Peter and St. Paul is an ancient tradition that happens one week before this festival. And though that may make this festival seem religious in nature, it's actually mostly themed around the 1504 Siege of Breton. And in keeping with that theme, each day has a sub-theme. Friday being Breton preparing for battle, Saturday Breton defending itself, and Sunday and Monday Breton in celebration. And if all of that wasn't enough to sell you on coming here, well, don't worry. Naturally, there is also a hearty dollop of a classic German beer fest as well. There's something for everybody. It actually reminds me an awful lot of the Alpine Almab tubes I love so much. Just swap out the fancy livestock for well-dressed peasants. Oh, <laughs> and of course, swap out your Lederhosen for your cod pieces. Now I'm sure long-time viewers of the channel are going to be incredibly shocked to hear that this is not my first medieval festival. I mean, where did you think I got this cool hat? 
it. You see, back when I lived in Washington DC, I loved going to the Maryland Ren Fair, largest on the East Coast, and then one drunken afternoon with my dad, he bet that if he got me this aggressively expensive hat, I'd never wear it. But here we are, man. I'm out here, I'm wearing it. I am so jealous of all the locals, employees, and VIPs with their private little island oasis dotted around. They're all uniquely themed, and from benches to cauldrons to beds, they are doing this festival right. Where on earth are all of these parents getting themed child wagons? It's crazy. Is there like a place you can rent them somewhere? This festival just has so much going on, and I'm afraid to say an awful lot of it overlaps with itself too. So if you want to see everything there is, you're gonna have to come here for many years. And I think that also kind of explains why everyone is so well dressed. Not a lot of first timers and a whole lot of repeat customers. Now personally, and of course I would say this, I do think some planning is required if you want to come here. It's pretty hot, it's pretty crowded, and everyone else seems to know exactly what they're doing. So if you don't, it could be pretty frustrating. Luckily for us first timers though, there is a wonderful app with a good timetable, and most importantly, a GPS enabled map, so you'll always know when and where to go. I just cannot get over how crowded and jovial this festival is. It's amazing, but it also raises a really big question. Why have I never seen anyone else cover it before? Why is it always just me doing the really cool stuff? I mean, I guess that's why you subscribe, right? Though I actually can't take credit for finding this one. Camille will explain how we figured it out a little later, but it definitely wasn't online. It never is. So as much as I'd like to take credit for finding this gem of a festival all by myself and sharing it with you guys, I just can't. That credit goes to my German Oma. So if you've watched my German Heritage video, you'll know that my Oma grew up in the tiny village of Rinklingen, which happens to be one kilometer from the city center of Breiten. So this is really special to me, because in a way, I'm just two generations away from being a local of Breiten. And it's extra, extra special, because when I was 12, my Oma and Opa actually took me to this festival, though I don't remember too much of it. I was only 12. But what I do remember is an amazing parade and having a lot of fun just hanging out with my Oma hearing all about her childhood in this area. Also the fact that Lord of the Rings The Return of the King came out just six months prior made me extra excited. So getting to visit this town and this medieval festival with my Oma as a child was really fun. I have a lot of really good memories with that. And getting to revisit it today has just been so nice. All right, so in about an hour and a half on the other side of this bamboo fence is gonna be one of the main Saturday attractions. That is the reenactment of the 1504 Siege of Breton. However, in the hour and a half before that starts, they're gonna be doing a medieval weapon showcase. And because I wanna make sure I have a seat for the reenactment, because I'm pretty interested in medieval weapons too, let's go inside early and check out the showcase. And so for three euros extra, we've managed to get ourselves tickets to the Waffen, Kampf and Pulverdamp theatrical production, which though I understand theoretically what that means, practically, I have no idea what the next few hours have in store. Let's find out. Und jetzt lassen Sie sich von Bretten und seiner Geschichte ins Jahr 1504 und die Bürger der Stadt und der umliegenden Ortschaften in Angst und Schrecken versetzte. That was really cute. Think just like the cheesiest local theater production you can imagine, but with incredibly accurate armor, costuming, and weapons. So it was pretty cool. 
I do think two and a half hours was a long time to be standing on those bleachers though, and sadly, you know as well as I did that I couldn't quite get amazing shot coverage, but I still had a really fantastic time. If your German's not great, or you're not particularly interested in the minutia of medieval weapons, then I'd probably recommend you skip the showcase. I really enjoyed it, but a lot went over my head, that's for sure. However, the reenactment, yeah, that's required viewing. I could see why they mark it as a tentpole activity for Saturday. So now if you're just as hyped as I am to watch more local German theatrical productions, then you're going to need to make sure that your German is nice and sharp, because God knows, they can be hard to understand. And I can't think of any better way to do that than with this week's video sponsor, Lingoda, an online language learning school that connects you with high quality educators all around the globe at essentially any time of the day. So not only are the lessons absolutely fantastic, they're incredibly convenient. But what sets them really apart, at least in my mind, is not just the absolutely fantastic a la carte lessons, but they also have an incredible motivator for anyone looking to get started or take their language to the next level, and that's the language learning sprint. Essentially, you commit to two months worth of lessons, and like the good student you are, as long as you show up to every single one of them, they will give you 100% of your money back. It's an incredible deal. Personally, I have been using Lingoda for months now, and I even participated in a sprint a couple months back. And even though it was incredibly difficult, it was 100% worth it. And if any of that sounds interesting to you, then please follow the link below, use our code so that they know that you came from us, and of course, in return, you'll receive $25 off your deposit. Thank you, Lingoda, for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the Medieval Festival. Completely contrary to my expectations, the later it gets in the day, just the more people show up. It is almost twice as packed as it was earlier this afternoon. And I don't know why I'd expect any different, but this medieval festival follows classical beer fest rules. Lots of communal tables, and of course, way too many people. But it's all part of the fun. I'll be completely honest with you guys, the vibes here are fantastic. It's hectic, it's wild, and it is so wow, much man. fun. I've also heard essentially no English today. I mean, some people can speak it and I've spoken it with them, but I don't hear it very often. And that's because I think this is a proper locals event if I've ever seen one. And now as the light fades, the crowd continues to turn up. For me though, it has been a long day filming this video so far for you guys. And I've got a long day tomorrow. It is hard being helpful. And so I'm afraid myself, I need to go to bed. And I'll see you right back here, right now, for day two of the Peter and Paul Festival, with today's theme being Breton in celebration. I don't know, maybe it was the breaking of the siege yesterday, but I am in an even better mood today. I barely even felt like an idiot wearing this hat on the train. It's almost impossible to imagine how crazy busy this was last night and how relaxed it is right now. If I hadn't documented it, I wouldn't have believed it either. But what's cool about that is it means that the crowd really ebbs and flows here. If you're looking for a wild night, then Saturday is your bet. And if you want to come with kids and really just relax, Sunday morning is a time for you. Though the peace and quiet might be short-lived because the parade will be starting in just about an hour or so, and yeah, people are gonna turn up for that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to capture this detail on camera, but on Sunday, because the siege has been successful, but not without a cost, a lot of the people will paint their faces and necks with wounds. Really cool. Okay, spicy opinion alert. Skip forward about 30 seconds if you don't want to hear it, but if I was a more trite, and I'll say basic American vlogger, I would probably look at this truly astounding square behind me and declare to you all that I feel like I'm in a fairy tale. Can you believe it, guys? It's a fairy tale come true. I always hear them say that, and it gives me such a weird chuckle because it doesn't look like a fairy tale at all. Fairy tales look exactly like this, and I think that relationship matters. Nobody looked at Disney and said, oh, let's make Brayton like that. It was the other way around. Whenever you come to these places, especially Americans out there, and you find yourself thinking that, take a moment, take a step back, and don't lord in the fiction, and instead, bask in the reality. Okay, rant over. All right, the cheer of children, the beating of drums, it can mean only one thing. The parade is starting. The 
parade takes up the entire main street and lasts for a long time. So I'd plan on dipping in and around and seeing it a few times or getting here really early if you want a front row seat. They're hard to come by. But don't worry if you don't get a front row seat on Main Street for the parade, because during the parade hours, it'll find you. Also, don't flash your coin purse or you're gonna get robbed. Man, it really did get busy for the parade, though I can tell why this is fantastic. And I love the medieval standard bearers raising the EU flag. Even they understand how important it is. And it won't exist for 500 more years. Looking at you, Britain, you've got a lot to learn. And now I know this is probably one of the more obvious observations I could make, but being in a real medieval town as it celebrates its own medieval history is just really cool. The vibes are amazing. And as someone who's only really experienced Renaissance festivals in North America, notable for not having any medieval or Renaissance history to its land, well, it's just completely different than anything I've ever experienced. Don't get me wrong though, I'm not trying to gatekeep what they do in North America. I think a lot of people have a lot of fun and I really enjoy it too. I'd never begrudge anyone a festival, but being next to a real half-timbered house that isn't here for the festival, it's just always been here, is really cool. Don't worry, I know exactly what you're thinking now. I can practically hear it through the screens. No matter how good the sights, sounds, and shops of this festival are, how's the food and drink? Well, I don't know. So how about we find out together? In classical German festival fare though, there's plenty of Käsespätzle, which I will not be partaking in today, and Flammkuchen, which I most definitely will. Looks like they've got good turkey as well. The toppings of Flammkuchen are equally traditional, mostly onion, bacon, things like that. Now, of course, none of that is particularly unique to this festival, but what is, these little boards that you get your food on. Not only are they very adorable, they will also save you some money if you keep them around. If you go back and get a second Flammkuchen, which I know you will, they give you some money off if you bring your own marked board. And because so many of the peasants here today don't have pockets, they drill little holes into them so you can attach them to your belts. Don't expect particularly good footage of that, you'll just have to take my word. I don't have a medieval belt and I'm not filming other people's butts for your pleasure. Now I know we're at a German medieval festival, but they have English toffee and I haven't had that in years. But there's only one way to find out if it's actually authentic and I think I can be the judge of that. Servus, can I put the 200 gram English toffee haben? Okay, so that was a little weird. I've never ordered English toffee in German before, but that was a bit of fun. Let's dig in, right? Now, if I may say so, I'm a little bit of a connoisseur of fudge. My dad went through a sweet making phase when I was a kid and just made a ton of toffee and fudge. So let's try it. Looks pretty good. I haven't had that in years. It takes a long time to eat a toffee. I've got to say, that was really good. And it was authentic, but not in the way they labeled it. I wouldn't call this a toffee. This was an English vanilla fudge. No idea why they got the name wrong, but if you're looking for authentic vanilla fudge, try their English toffee. But either way, I absolutely love festival snacks, and these are really good. Not only can't I wait to finish these off, got myself a second one for the train home. And I know I've mentioned it a million times now, but there are just so many people dressed up in period-specific clothing. This is fantastic. Like a town of medieval peasants, as it was and as it should be. Just kidding, feudalism was bad, but it had drip. And so I think that's gonna have to be it for this video, guys. This has been an amazing weekend. However, I do have a four-hour train ride back to Munich and work in the morning, so we can't stay too late. That being said, it is actually seven o'clock right now, so it's uh, still gonna be a pretty long day, but 100% worth it for such an amazing festival. And so a question for you guys out there, because this isn't really what I usually cover, and so I wanna know, have you enjoyed it? Has this been helpful? Are you planning on coming here? And had you already heard about it? And if you want to see more festival videos like this, then let me know as well, because I mean, I want to make content that helps you guys out. And of course, if any of you locals know of any festivals that we should check out, then you need to let me know about them, because I want to go. 
And so lastly, a big thank you to everyone out there still watching at this point. Give us a like, comment, subscribe if you think we've earned it, and I will see you in the next video, no matter where that might be.